The movie starts off with a beautiful view of the city's skyline. A man, standing on top of a roof makes a reservation to a fancy hotel restaurant, and once there, eyes a beautiful blonde who is standing a couple feet away from him. She seems to be uncomfortable by a man who keeps touching her shoulders trying to talk to her. In an attempt to get him off her, Quebec she looks at the man having dinner alone and asks him to be her pretend boyfriend. She identifies herself as Jess and he introduces himself as Nikki. They drink together and have a great time. Jess tells him she's having a really fun time with him. They end up going to her room, which is in the same hotel and kiss passionately. However, it doesn't last long. A man Jess calls her husband barges in with a gun and pins Nikki down. Much to his and Jess's surprise, Nikki starts telling her husband to shoot him and continues saying provocative things. Nikki lies about having cancer the size of a peach in his brain and gets off the hook. As it turns out, the husband and Jess are actually newbie thieves who were trying to get Nikki's money. But somehow, Nikki already knew. He confesses that he knew she was a thief when she stole the wallet of the man who was hitting on her downstairs. When asked why he still came upstairs with her, he cheekily replies by saying he had professional curiosity, and he likes a woman's body. Later on, Jess is walking down a street when she gets approached by Nikki, who says she might want to grow a pair of eyes at the back of her head if she is to be a professional con artist. They go to a coffee shop and Nikki tells her about his family background. His grandfather, who used to run a crooked game in Harlem joined hands with his son, Nikki's father who started shilling for him. But one day they get caught throwing signals by a mobbed up guy, who gets his gun out. There is no way out of death, except one. Nikki says it is the Toledo panic button, basically making your enemy believe you do not have a partner by shooting your partner. After hearing that Nikki's father killed his grandfather, Jess clarifies that she was not born into this world. She was just a dyslexic foster child. She asks him to teach her his ways and offers to pay him from a wallet she stole herself. He takes her outside and tutors her about the intricacies of the slow human mind. After twirling her around, he already has her watch wallet and Zumba card in his hands. He playfully tells her how to maintain eye contact, while positioning his body in a way that lets him steal various things off of her in a second. Jess smiles and tells him she gets it. In the next scene, Nikki is in New Orleans and Jess surprisingly comes to see him. She has already grabbed his wallet from his pocket and asks him to acknowledge her growing skills. She tells him she wants to be all in with him and tells him of his family history that she found out. He introduces her to his friend who gets her dressed in a skimpy pink dress and they get ready to steal from a large party. Much to everyone in Nikki's team's surprise, Jess is better than they expected her. She smoothly steals rings wallet watches and other valuable items from tourists. Nikki decides to take her in and congratulates her for becoming a criminal. He adds to her knowledge of how scams work around crowded places, and even tells her how credit card numbers can be found using finger strokes on ATMs. The man who's working on stealing from an ATM in front of them, who is known as Farhad, finances his own gravy company through the millions he earns by ATM fraud. He meets Jess but acts inappropriately, implying that she is a woman he would like to get with. They take her to the scam agency run by Nikki and educates her of all the operations that take place. She sees a really pretty necklace and asks if she can keep it, but Nikki doesn't let her. Jess seems to have a big crush on Nikki, based on the way she smiles shyly at him from afar. Nikki is a smart man though, he is most probably aware of her feelings. He comes up to her later and gives her a clean ID a clean credit card to help with future theft. He gets her a new apartment and she asks him to give her a ride. After hinting that she wants him to come into her apartment, she waits for his reply. He tells her he should take a cab instead. Back at her new home, the doorbell rings and Nikki enters her new place, and they spend a night together. The next day Farhad and Jess have a very entertaining conversation about Farhad's family, and then about his friendship with Nikki. However, they are not there to talk. Soon they get a signal and Farhad pretends to drop to the floor with agony. While Jess is making a ruckus about her fallen husband, the people from the agency around the fancy-looking restaurant get to work, stealing from rich people's pockets. The agency celebrate a groundbreaking week where they were all able to make $1.2 million. Later in bed, Jess asks Nikki to give her constructive criticism and he continues to tell her how rare her talent is. The way she can stay calm under stressful situations is something he has not seen in anyone but her. It is obvious from the look in her eyes that she is flattered but she laughs it off and clarifies that she was talking about pleasure. They laugh together. Jess then asks him why his nickname is Mellow, and although Nikki is reluctant at first, he tells her it is because his father thought of him as a soft person and named him Marshmallow. The next day, they both go to watch the Superdome with front seat tickets. Jess confesses that she doesn't actually like football and doesn't enjoy the game. However, he is still bent on having fun, and they play a little game where they guess the actions of people in the crowd. The game gets a little serious when another Asian man from the crowd joins them. They start betting big money, like $1,000 and then $5,000 for simple bets. Nikki seems to be losing and gets up to get a drink. But the Asian man seems to be having a lot of fun and stops him from leaving. 
They bet 50 grand but Nicky loses again. It is obvious from his facial expressions that he has a slight problem with gambling and cannot stop himself once he starts. He bets $100,000 next. He money the whole agency chipped in to acquire, but at this point he is a man who is unable to listen to anyone but his addiction. He loses the 100 grand and by now, Jess glares at him, takes the bag and gets ready to leave. He maneuvers around her and this time, he bets the whole bag of cash, $1.2 million. Unfortunately, much to Jess's dismay, he loses. The disappointment is unreal but as Nikki is walking away, he gets provoked and walks back, Liu in to double it. This time, he says Jess will play for him, although she is livid at the idea. He forces her to play, and surprisingly, she wins. On the way back, Nikki tells her it was their plan all along. Liu in is a legendary gambler who bets big money like this, and Nikki had been programming him the whole day to pick the number 55 which would make him lose. After getting the job done however, Nikki has a solemn expression on his face. He tells the driver to pull over, gives her 80 grand and tells the driver to take her to the airport. The sudden breakup from Nikki startles her. Jess cannot make any sense of what happened and cries a lot. Three years later, the scene shows a racing track in Buenos Aires. Nikki gets approached by this European engineer. Mr. Garriga who plans elaborately to scam his competitors. Nikki arrives at a party and starts his act. He pretends to drink vodka martini on the rocks, which is hard alcohol and acts out shenanigans to get a certain person's interest. While he is walking towards a man to pick a staged fight, he encounters his old partner, Jess, beautifully clad in a tight red dress, walking down the staircase and kisses the man he was going to fight. He has sudden flashbacks of the way he broke up with her and goes to the balcony to get a breather. Jess meets him on the balcony and tells him she's not a thief anymore, and that the man she is with, Raphael, is her real boyfriend. She tells Nikki to pretend he doesn't know her because Raphael does not know about her past. After the talk with Jess, Nikki is not able to control his emotions and drowns them with wine getting stupidly drunk. Unable to hide his anger, he walks up to Rafael Garriga and punches him, which was part of the plan. But of course, the plan didn't involve him being punched this hard. Nikki screams at Rafael for stealing what was his and gets removed from the party. The plan is a success however, because the man whose attention Nikki wanted, Mr. McEwen invites him to lunch. The next day, Nikki meets McEwen's on a resort and strikes a deal to get him the EXR a built-in system for race cars from Raphael if he pays him 3 million euro. Expectedly, Nikki keeps eyeing Jess who is downstairs with Raphael. After talking to McEwens, he goes to Jess and tells her to put some clothes on. She obviously gets offended by his lousy comment. Jess walks away and tells him to stay away from her because Raphael is the jealous type. Later on, while shopping, Jess witnesses a woman getting on the bus but forgetting her bag. She sees her home address in her wallet and walks to go find it to return the purse. Once there, she meets Nikki. She tricks him into believing she wants to be with him again and says some very cringe things to her, along the line of I'll keep you safe. After confessing that she is playing with him, she struts away. The next day, Nikki picks Farhad up from the airport and drops him off at a market. There, him and Jess meet and have a conversation. He tells Jess to accept Nikki again because he is a different man now. He continues to give a necklace that Jess liked three years ago and says Nikki kept it for her all these years. Sitting together, Nikki persuades her that he has changed after what happened in New Orleans. She does not fall for it and leaves him sitting there alone. The next scene shows a black car stopping in front of Jess. After that she is at the doorstep of his living room, disgruntled and sad looking. When he asks her what's wrong, she tells him to kiss her. They again, spend the night together. The next morning, he asks her to come with him but she states that she cannot just trust him. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. It's Raphael's right-hand man. He comes in and lectures Nikki like a true millennial. Jess hides all over the hotel suite and is finally able to move to the balcony, and Nikki tells her to meet him at 7. After collecting the money from all his clients, he takes two huge bags up to his room and waits for Jess to arrive. He waits and waits but for some reason, she does not come. Disappointed, he gets up to leave but finds her at his door. They leave together. The next scene does not show the protagonist, but shows a big burly man driving in his car. He suddenly puts on a neck cast and a helmet and crashes into the car in front of him on purpose. As it seems, it was Nikki's car. At a warehouse, Raphael has Jess and him tied to chairs. He explains that Nikki did not keep their deal. It was promised that he would sell the fake EXR software to McEwen but Nikki actually sold the real one. He suffocates Jess in an attempt to get Nikki talking. He finally does and confesses that he got Raphael's passwords from Jess, without her even being aware. He confesses the fact that he has been cold-heartedly using her all this time to get information that she was his in. After hearing this, Raphael lets out a big laugh and calls the whole story a lie. When asked why, he rips the tape off Jess's mouth and she confesses to Nikki that she was never Raphael's girlfriend. She was only hanging around him to steal his 200 grand watch. After hearing some harsh truth from Jess's mouth, 
Nikki's eyes fill up with tears. He feels like it's the end of his life and states that he wants to tell the truth one last time. However, as he is talking, Raphael's right hand man viciously shoots him. Jess holds his face and tells him she loves him. He closes his eyes. Raphael leaves in a hurry. Jess feels like the man who shot Nikki is coming to her and tries to attack him, but he lightly shoves her away. The old man turns out to be one of Nikki's men. This is a huge plot twist in the movie. The man explains that he shot Nikki between the third and fourth rib, puncturing the lung, and with the right treatment it is treatable. Jess finds out that this is the Toledo panic button strategy. The man turns out to be Nikki's father, who abandoned him. He leaves with the bags of money after lecturing his son about how love does not last among thieves. But if he has made his choice, so be it. In the end, Jess helps Nikki to the hospital while wearing the watch she wanted from Raphael.